Hello, and welcome to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing, with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it just immediately anchors you in the reality of HIV today, the sheer scale of testing, the infrastructure. It's huge. It really is. It highlights that constant ongoing effort in management and awareness. Exactly. It shows how far we've come in integrating testing and care. Hmm. But uh, it also made me think, what's the next frontier beyond testing and managing? What about prevention? What about, dare I say it, a cure? And that's precisely where our deep dive is heading today, because we're not just talking about a small step. We're looking at something potentially, well, groundbreaking. Okay, tell me more. We're focusing on a major new phase one clinical trial for an HIV vaccine. It just launched. And what's really striking, what makes the story compelling, isn't just the science. It's the leadership, strong African leadership and a really deep global collaboration. African led, you say. That sounds significant. Hugely significant. It's a story about science, yes, but also about partnership and, frankly, about shifting how global health research gets done. Okay, so that's our mission for this deep dive then. Let's unpack this trial. What is it really aiming for? Who's behind this coalition? And, you know, why does the location, why does the approach matter so much? Not just for Africa, but as you said, potentially for everyone. Exactly. Let's get into it. All right. So the big news. Let's start there. An investigational HIV vaccine candidate. And it's got quite a name. It does. Prepare yourself. Gorilla adenovirus. Vectored HIV networked epitopes vaccine. Mm. Or uh, Trigad avian U1 for short. Crad avian U1, yeah. Much easier. Let's stick with that. Okay, GHIV in one. It started phase one clinical trials. Yeah. And you said just launched. Literally just. The very first doses were given, get this, July 28th, 2025. So super recent. Wow, where? At the Mutala Trust clinical trial site. That's in Herrera, Zimbabwe. Herrera. Okay. And phase one, remind us, what are the key goals at this stage? Right. So phase one, first in human, that means it's the very first time this specific vaccine candidate is being tested in people. The absolute top priority is safety. Is it well tolerated? Does it cause any serious side effects? That's paramount. Safety first. Makes sense. Always. Second, they look at immunogenicity. Basically, does the vaccine actually do what it's supposed to do immunologically? Does it sort of wake up the immune system and teach it to recognize HIV? So safety and does it trigger a response? Precisely. Those are the foundational questions. You need positive answers there before you can even think about larger trials like phase two or three. But uh, what's really interesting here, right from phase one, is a hint of broader ambition. Ooh, how so? We'll get into the participants shortly, but it suggests they're looking beyond just prevention from day one. Intriguing. Okay, but before we get there, let's talk about who's making this happen. Mm -hmm. You mentioned this unique partnership structure. Yes, and this is really central to the story. It's not just one big pharma company or one research institute. It's a coalition. And African-led, you emphasized. Absolutely. So you've got the Mutala Trust in Zimbabwe, obviously key. Then there's Rethera Stroll. They're an Italian biotech company. The Reagan Institute, that's a major research center linked with Mass General Brigham, MIT, and Harvard. Okay, heavy hitters there. Definitely. And IAVI, the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, they're the official sponsor of this specific trial, which is designated IAVI C114. IAVI C114. Got it. And underpinning all this uh, significant funding comes from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Right. That makes sense. So why is the African leadership aspect so crucial here? It's not just symbolic, is it? No, not at all. It's fundamentally important for several reasons. Dr. Tara Makadzong from Mitala Trust put it really well. She said essentially that this is a landmark for the continent showing the power of true partnership. True partnership. Yeah, where you have IAVI sponsorship, Retheris technology, this GR platform. We'll talk about the Reagan Institute's really innovative immunogen design based on decades of science and African investigators co-leading every single phase. Co-leading every phase. That's different. It really is. It means the research questions, the trial design, the community engagement. It's all being shaped by people who understand the local context, the specific needs, the prevalent virus strains in the region. It also builds lasting research capacity in Africa. She concluded by saying, you know, we are edging closer to an HIV vaccine made possible by global collaboration with clinical trials conducted in Africa, for Africa and for the world. For Africa and for the world. I like that. It avoids that old model of research just being done on Africa. Exactly. It's a paradigm shift. 
and it ensures the findings are relevant where the need is greatest. And that local capacity building extends beyond just running the trials, right? I saw the immunological analysis is also happening locally. That's right. The actual lab work to see how well the immune system is responding, the immunogenicity assessment that's being done by top-tier African institutes. You've got the HVTN Immunology Lab in Cape Town, the African Health Research Institute, or AHRI in Durban, and the National Institute for Communicable Diseases in Johannesburg, all in South Africa. So the expertise, the advanced tech, it's right there. It is. It creates this robust, self-sufficient network. It's about building sustainable scientific infrastructure. Okay, let's get into the nitty-gritty of the trial itself, IAVI C114. Who's participating? So the plan is to enroll about 120 healthy adults, ages 18 to 50. Pretty standard for phase one. Okay. But here's the really interesting part you hinted at earlier. Within that 120, they are specifically including 48 people who are already living with HIV. Ah, okay. And these individuals are on treatment. Yes. Crucially, they are virally suppressed on antiretroviral therapy, RRT. Their virus is under control thanks to medication. Now, how common is that, including people living with HIV in a phase one vaccine trial? Usually you think of vaccines as purely preventative. It's definitely less common for a trial primarily framed as preventative. And yes, it signals something quite ambitious, potentially transformative, about GRED HIV N1. So what's the goal there? Well, the overall aim is still safety and immunogenicity assessment in both groups, those with and without HIV. Everyone gets either one or two shots of the vaccine, or a placebo, and they're watched closely for 19 months for safety signals and immune responses. 19 months follow-up. Wow. But including the group living with HIV, that's where the potential therapeutic or even curative angle comes in. Right. You mentioned prevention and maybe cure earlier. How does including this group help explore that? Okay, so this vaccine is designed to generate a strong response from a specific type of immune cell called CD8 plus T cells. These are often called killer T cells because their job is to find and destroy cells that are already infected with a virus like HIV. Okay, the killer cells. Exactly. The thinking is, if this vaccine can effectively generate these killer T cells that target HIV-infected cells, then maybe, just maybe, it could be used not just to prevent infection, but also as part of a strategy to help people already living with HIV control the virus better, perhaps even without daily medication, or as part of a cure strategy. Wow. So testing it in people living with HIV, even though they're suppressed, gives them early data on whether the vaccine can actually induce those specific T-cell responses in the context of an existing infection. Precisely. It's a direct way to assess its potential for therapeutic use. Dr. Gaurav Gaiha at the Ragon Institute spoke about this. He mentioned they're excited to be moving insights from studies of, get this, spontaneous elite controllers of HIV towards developing and testing this vaccine in Africa. Elite controllers, what does that mean? Ah, uh, yes. Elite controllers are fascinating. They're a very small group of people who, despite being infected with HIV, naturally maintain undetectable or very low viral loads for years without taking any RT medication. Their immune systems just handle it. Somehow, yes. Their immune systems are exceptionally good at controlling HIV. So scientists study them intensively to figure out how they do it. What's special about their immune response? Learning from them provides clues for designing vaccines and therapies. So this vaccine incorporates lessons learned from people who naturally control HIV. That's the idea. Trying to mimic or induce aspects of that successful natural control, particularly the T-cell part, and testing it in people living with HIV is a critical step in seeing if that approach might hold water therapeutically. That adds a whole other layer of significance. Okay, so how does the vaccine actually work? What's the mechanism behind GNHIV NA1? Right, the science. So the core idea is to train the immune system, specifically those CD8 plus T cells we talked about, to recognize and attack very specific critical parts of the HIV virus. How does it deliver that training? It uses something called a viral vector. In this case, it's the gr part of the name, a gorilla adenovirus vector. A gorilla cold virus. <laughs> Essentially, yes. But it's been modified so it's harmless, it can't cause disease. Think of it like a delivery truck. It's engineered to carry the genetic instructions, the blueprint for making specific pieces of HIV proteins called epitopes. Not the whole virus, just key pieces. Exactly. Key vulnerable regions of the virus that the Reagan Institute identified through their research, including those studies on elite controllers. The GRA vector delivers these blueprints into our cells. Our cells then make these HIV pieces, and the immune system sees them and learns to recognize them as foreign. And hopefully 
mounts a strong T-cell response against them. That's the goal, to generate a really potent, targeted CD8 plus T-cell response against these crucial HIV epitopes. The trial will measure how well it achieves that. And this GR vector, that came from Rethera. Yes, Rethera developed and optimized this GRD vector platform. They have clinical data showing it's good at inducing T cell responses, and they also manufactured the actual vaccine doses for the trial. While Reagan designed the payload, the HIV parts. Precisely. Reagan figured out which HIV epitopes to target the networked epitopes part of the name likely refers to targeting multiple vulnerable sites and designed the immunogen, the specific instructions, loaded into the GRD vector. So specialized tech from both sides. Absolutely. Stefano Coloca, Rethera's CEO, emphasized that their GRAD platform holds great promise to trigger a strong CD8 response targeting vulnerable viral regions. There's real confidence in this specific approach. It's amazing seeing these pieces come together. Now let's loop back to the where. You mentioned Herrera. What are the other sites? Right. So besides the Mutala Trust in Harai, Zimbabwe, there are two sites in South Africa the Desmond Tutu Health Foundation, DTHF, in Cape Town, and the Africa Health Research Institute, AHRI, in Durban. Okay, Zimbabwe and South Africa. Why these specific locations? Is it just about infrastructure? Infrastructure is part of it. These are excellent clinical trial sites, but it's much more fundamental than that. It's about relevance and equity. Really? Yeah, the source material is very clear on this. It says, basically, to know if this vaccine could actually work in sub-Saharan Africa, which bears the heaviest burden of HIV globally, you have to test it there. You need to test it within the communities most affected by the epidemic. Because the virus strains might be different, the populations. All of the above. Genetic diversity of the virus, different population genetics, different co-infections, social factors. Testing it where it's needed most ensures the results are actually meaningful for those populations. It builds trust, ensures the research is ethical, and ultimately increases the chances of developing a vaccine that truly works in the real world where it's most needed. So it's baked into the design test it where it matters most. Exactly. It's not an afterthought. Dr. Vincent Muturi Kioi from IABI called it the future of vaccine development. He said it's rooted in Africa, built through global partnerships, and designed for the communities most affected by HIV. That phrase again, rooted in Africa, yeah. designed for the communities. It, it really captures the essence, doesn't it? It really does. It represents a more equitable, hopefully more effective way forward for global health research. And just to mention, the people leading these crucial sites on the ground, Hope Makatsang at Mutala Trust, Theodora Lovespring at DTHF and Miracles of the Bible at AHRI. Incredible local leadership driving this forward. Absolutely vital. So wrapping this up, as we look back on this deep dive, the big takeaway for me is this powerful combination. You've got cutting edge science, the GRAD vector, the epitope design, but combined with true global collaboration and crucially, that strong African leadership and focus. Mm -hmm. And the potential here feels twofold, right? A preventative vaccine is the holy grail, obviously. Yeah. But the fact that this trial is already exploring therapeutic or even curative possibilities based on those T-cell responses, that's incredibly exciting. It really is. It speaks to the ambition and the innovation driving this specific candidate. It offers a tangible sense of progress, of hope, in a fight that's been going on for decades. Definitely. And maybe a final thought for you, our listener, to chew on. Think about how this model, this focus on T-cells, this deep embedding of research within the most affected communities, this principle of co-leadership, how might that change the game? Not just for HIV, but for tackling other major global health threats like TB or malaria or even future pandemics. That's a powerful question. Could this be a blueprint? It could be. Reflect on what it means to do research that is truly for Africa and for the world. What happens when scientific frontiers meet global equity? This trial might just be showing us a glimpse of that future.